Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's topic in conservative dentistry is pulp vitality test. So it is a common test we uh, conduct before doing a endodontic procedure to make sure that the tooth is vital or non-vital. So depending upon the vitality status, we can opt the required treatment. So it is uh, basically plays a very important role in diagnosis of the status of pulp. So pulp tests are usually done before restorative or endodontic treatment to aid in treatment plan. Pulp that is vital is indicated for uh, restorative treatment and pulp that is non-vital is indicated for endodontic treatment. So now let's learn the pulp vitality test one by one. First one we have cold test, then electrical pulp test, anesthesia test, percussion test, heat test, cavity test, bite test and palpation test. So we'll start with the cold test. So cold test suppose we have a suspected tooth. This is our suspected tooth. Okay. So So we are trying to check the vitality of this tooth by using a stimulus that is a cold stimulus all are different different approach to check whether the tooth is vital or not so in this case we are applying cold so we should start always from the adjacent tooth if this is the tooth of interest we should start with the adjacent so then only the patient will be able to distinguish between the normal tooth and abnormal tooth okay so this might be the normal vital tooth this is might not be the vital tooth so when we apply cold or any stimulus here the patient will be having a response so next we apply on the tooth which we are planning to do a vitality test and the patient might not feel the response or might not feel the pain or sensitivity so we can differentiate between the normal tooth and the tooth which we are suspecting a non-vitality so cold test always start with the adjacent tooth so we keep uh, eye stick on the cervical area so usually at the cervical area we keep an eye stick because uh, where the enamel is very thin so that the conductivity to pulp will be very fast so we keep an eye stick over the cervical area and we check the vitality so there can be basically three conditions the first one the patient feel immediate pain which lasts for one to three seconds after the removal of eye sticks so that indicates vital pulp that is the first scenario. The second scenario, patient feel immediate severe pain that lasts for several minutes even after the removal of ice. That indicate irreversibly inflamed pulp. Irreversibly inflamed pulp. And the last scenario, the patient feels nothing that means the tooth is non-vital okay so these are the three scenarios we can expect after doing the cold test next we have heat test so this is also following the same mechanism so we start with the adjacent tooth place a hot instrument such as burnisher or hot material such as heated gutta percha over the cervical over the cervical uh, third of the tooth and again we have three responses that is immediate pain for one to three seconds that indicates vital pulp immediate severe pains which last for several minutes that indicates irreversibly inflamed pulp and patient feels nothing which indicates non-vital tooth so next we have the electrical pulp testing Okay, so electrical pulp testing is different where we use electric 
current that is starting again with the adjacent tooth so place one of the electrodes okay so they will be having two electrodes one electrode which is black and another electrode which is red color okay so there will be two electrodes black and red so the black electrode on the patient's finger so this goes to patient finger patient finger and the uh, electrode which is the red one okay which is on the tooth okay so this goes to the tooth this is on the tooth so because we need to complete the electric circuit we need to complete the electric circuit then apply little electric current and increase it slowly so turn on the device and slowly increase the electric current and ask the patient to tell when he feels pain okay so each tooth should be tested two to three times and the results are compared if the results are not definitive test the adjacent tooth and tooth on the opposite arch so if patient feels pain then the tooth is vital if no pain then the tooth is non vital okay so we can use another technique in combination with electrical pulp testing to reach a reliable diagnosis so why we actually uh, starting with the adjacent tooth as i mentioned to serve as a control okay so so that i can compare it with the questionable tooth if both tooth are not responsive to the pulp test it either mean the pulp is non vital for both the teeth or something wrong with the testing procedure so next we have the cavity test so this method should be used only when all other test methods provide inconclusive results the tooth is not anesthetized and tooth is drilled with a round burr with a water coolant so it is a uh, we can say it is not very ethical but if all other are giving very inconclusive result the next option is cavity test as a last resort so the patient is asked if he feels any pain during drilling so always you should make sure not to expose pulp okay so should never ever expose pulp so after that we need to refill the cavity so here also we can expect two conditions patient feels immediate severe pain which indicates vital pulp and patient feels nothing so it is a non vital pulp so next is the anesthesia test so when patient is not able to specify the site of pain and when other pulp testing techniques are inconclusive this test is used so what we do is we anesthetize single tooth at a time using only a intra ligamentary injection so the most posterior tooth is in the suspected quadrant so we have so this is canine two premolars and we have three molars okay so what we do is we start with the most posterior so we expect one tooth that is this one this is a expected tooth so this quadrant the most posterior so this is a most posterior tooth we start from this using a intra ligamentary injection okay so the most posterior tooth uh, anesthetized first so if pain persist repeat the procedure to the next tooth mesial to it then it is continued until the pain disappears if source of pain cannot be determined repeat the same technique on the opposite arch next we have the bite test so bite test is nothing but if a patient complains of pain on mastication okay so in that scenario we should perform bite test so patient feel pain on biting if pulp necrosis has reached to periodontal space or the periapical area or there is vertical fracture in the tooth 
so how to conduct this uh, bite test so the first thing is ask the patient to bite on a hard object such as cotton roll toothpick or tooth sloth so this is something uh, like tooth sloth apparatus which you use for the bite test so ask the patient to bite on the suspected tooth and the tooth on the opposite arch so if patient report pain uh, then there will be a vertical fracture or pulp infection which has reached to periodontal space or peri periapical area so the next one is percussion test percussion test uh, place uh, a finger at the incisal edge or occlusal area of the tooth and gently press it inward if patient feel pain then the periapical area is inflamed because when there is infection at the periapical area and we apply pressure here that is at the incisal edge or occlusal so it will push the tooth towards the inflamed area so it will elicit pain so if patient report no pain then periapical area is healthy so more accurate result can be obtained from radiograph and combination of other test so the last one is palpation test so palpation is using our index finger and place it at the periapical area not on the tooth so periapical area of the suspected tooth so the patient will report pain if the periapical area is infected so no pain if it is intact so more accurate result can be obtained from radiograph so how much reliable are these pulp vitality tests so pulp tests can be helpful tools for dentist through diagnostic phase so but a single pulp test with negative result is not uh, that much reliable so therefore always uh, dentists prefer combination of tests so sometimes pulp tests tell you that the tooth is non vital while the reality the tooth might be a vital one so this kind of situation is called false negative result okay so sometimes the test result show that the tooth is vital but it might be non vital so that is known as false positive false positive actually it is non vital but your test tell you it is vital false negative actually it is vital but your test tell you it is non vital so what on occasions we get a false negative result so that is uh, the pulp shows that tooth is non vital but the reality is the tooth is vital as in cases such as uh, recently traumatized tooth recently erupted tooth with immature apex patients with high pain threshold uh, tooth with calcified canals uh, while doing electric pulp tester if the battery is very low and patient taking any kind of uh, painkillers or psychiatric drugs one necrotic canal in multi rooted tooth while other canals are vital in all these cases we might get false negative result so where are the false positive results so false positive it is a false assurance the tooth is non vital but we are saying it is vital so this kind of results occur in situations like error in pulp testing like when ice is melting and reaching another tooth or gingiva or when electrical current conducting with adjacent tooth and similar situations one vital canal in multi rooted tooth while other canals are necrotic in tooth with abscess there is liquefaction necrosis in the pulp which conduct electricity during electric pulp testing so all these cases we get false positive result so these are the common uh, test we apply for checking pulp vitality so these are the conventional test but we have some of the newer test so they are uh, very accurate and very reliable ones the one is laser doppler flowmetry l d 
enough. So it actually sends laser light to the tooth and transmitted beam is received by the photo detector and checking the vitality. Okay, so that is laser Doppler flowmetry. The second one is pulp oximetry. So it basically measures the pulse rate of blood in the tooth and shows the result in screen. So we get a numerical value which shows that the blood uh, pulse rate of blood and we can find out whether it is vital or non vital then we have one more that is dual wavelength spectro photometry spectro photometry so this method measures the oxygen level in capillaries using a light beam and provide the result on a screen okay so it measures the oxygen level in capillaries this measures the uh, pulse rate of blood this laser which sends a light to the tooth and transmitted beam is received so there are many other newer technologies and techniques such as uh, measuring the temperature of tooth surface trans illumination with fiber optic light then xenon 133 then uh, uh, gas uh, desaturation, radio labeled microspheres, electromagnetic flowmetry. So, all are the newer pulp vitality tests, but conventional ones are what we learned heat test, cold test, uh, electric test, pulp vitality test, the percussion test, palpation test, all are the conventional ones. So, this is very commonly asked short essay in conservative dentistry. So, hope you understood this uh, simple concept of pulp vitality, checking the vitality of pulp to decide the uh, treatment protocol of that particular tooth. So I'll come up with a new topic in conservative industry. Thank you.